You're watching News View with Lee Sullivan. Welcome back. It's News View visiting with Ron Hart, syndicated columnist, Southern Libertarian, and uh, Fox News View contributor <laughs> and analyst. <laughs> and I'll think of some other stuff as we go along yeah, here. Okay. All right. Uh, Elliot, if I may call him Elliot, that's what his wife, I mm -hmm. believe, calls him. Spitzer. Spitzer uh, Swallows. Yes, absolutely. And um, he's uh, out and about again. Talk about running for governor again, which if he stages this comeback would be amazing. Uh, people say he's out there polling constituents right now. So <laughs> I don't know what that means, but he's, he's out there seeing if he can uh, lay the groundwork to run again. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> laying groundwork would be different for, for uh, you know. Yeah, he's, or polling he's, constituents. He's, right, he's exactly. <laughs> if this guy's able to come back, I mean, it, it is an all time low for politics. He is a mean, bad person. I mean, he, is a, he would ruin careers, he would use his position. And I was on him early in my columns, well before his demise. I knew of him on Wall Street. I saw someone who could easily go to his podium and for his own self aggrandizement in his own political career, something like Atlas Shrugged, where you got these you know, overly zealous uh, prosecutors who wanted high profile people. Right. And he would just never put on a case. He never actually tried a case. I think he tried one case and lost it. But he would just call the podium as, you, as, you, as Attorney General and just ruin people's lives with no evidence and shake them down. And they, you know what they would do? Most of them knew he was the sheriff in town and they would contribute to his campaigns. So it was a public shakedown. It was what he used to do. He was a very bad guy, and we'll see what happens with him. Well, I hope something really special does. <laughs> um, well, he did provide high-paying jobs for women in New York. Right. Thirty-five dollars an hour is pretty good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man. And he was pretty elusive too. I mean, the, his bodyguards couldn't find him. Yeah. yeah. Was he walking the Appalachian that? Trail? <laughs> what was he doing? <laughs> he's gone. He's gone to. He's gone to Buenos Aires. So oh, I mean, it's a, well, I don't know where. No, he wasn't doing go. that. He was pretty brazen. I think the guy obviously had a wanted to get caught. And what he was doing was was <laughs> just amazingly stupid. And he just thought he was above it all. His ego was so big right. that he just thought he was above it all. His dad's very wealthy. He had a lot of money. He's a classic limousine liberal that we talked about on your last show, where he had to be a liberal because it made him feel better about things. But really, at his core, a very bad guy. The war, Afghanistan, Iraq. Uh, I, I enjoyed uh, your piece uh, in uh, Sunday's paper here in the News Herald, uh, and uh, I would, uh, I, I think you and I have a concurrence on uh, on that. Uh, I, but it doesn't, it does not look like we can find a right. reverse, does it? I appreciate you as a decorated war veteran to, to say that, because I was afraid you were, were, were the other side of that issue. But basically I called for the uh, pullout of our Iraqi troops, perhaps set up something on the edge of each of these, these countries where you have airstrikes if you need it. Because historically the Muslims, these radical fundamentalist Muslims, it's not all Muslims, but this is the radical element, they can't get along with each other. They have sects within sects over there where they can't get along with each other. They've never amassed a national army. They've never been able to coordinate themselves in a manner that would ever threaten the United States. If the United States goes under, it will be because we spend too much money, like the Soviet Union did in Afghanistan, which they call the graveyard of empires. Really? And, you know, I don't want my son, and you were in Vietnam, you understand this, we don't do well in guerrilla wars. I don't want my 20-year-old son with, with a gun going mud hut to mud hut trying to get this poor Muslim kid who's fighting a religious war because he's told he's going to get 72 virgins to shoot my son, we got a great army, we've got great military people, the best. We fly over, we use the drones, there's a lot of ways you can uh, prosecute this war without having like, ground troops there. It is, uh, Mr. Hart, uh, the infallible uh, belief, I know, in the arrogance of those in charge that we can change what has been forever and ever and has never changed. Right, exactly. This is a third world country. Ron Hart, we'll be right back. You're watching News View with Lee Sullivan. Welcome back. News View visiting with Ron Hart. Uh, Mr. Hart talking to me. He wrote a column. Can, he said, declare victory and then get out. <clears throat> you know, we are.
are reticent to follow history and learn, whether it was the French that we followed in Vietnam, and the Russians follow the British, and now we're there, and to what end? Uh, and the service and the sacrifice of the men and women that serve this great nation is uh, poorly focused in, in a lot of instances, and I, I hate to see that. It is a disservice to their service. But <clears throat> this Afghanistan profile is becoming more President Obama's right. than, than, than President Bush's. I mean, he is, right. he's taking over some ownership in that, is sure. he not? And he ran on the idea of pulling out of these wars. That was his big thing, the anti-war. And something about being president, I don't know what it is. Maybe you like having tanks at your disposal. I don't know what it is. They get in there and they like war. Uh, I don't think they want to be the one that lost the war, but when you have no definition of winning the war, then how do you win it? I mean, how do we know we won over there? We declare victory on our own terms, we come home. I mean, we're gonna Americanize every country in the world where everybody's you know, fat, eating Starbucks and playing video games like us? No, I mean, I, this is a Muslim country. These are people that are, it's like walking through the Old Testament if you go there, I and mean, these countries are old. I right. mean, you're bombing rock huts with million dollar missiles. We gotta go on. This is this is a waste of time and international currency as well. Obama's right about that. We gotta repair ourselves. And and and, and see it's it, you know, you talk about the exit strategy. Well well you, I mean everyone in the world had an opportunity to see what the exit strategy was in Vietnam. Right. Uh, and, and there was never any there was never any there was never any concept of what you would do or what that it was it would have mm -hmm. if Nixon hadn't pulled it right it would have gone on forever. forever and look what happened everybody said well if you get out of Vietnam it's gonna be a domino theory and communism will run through the world it did not we got out of Vietnam we're trading with them now we got right. I, I see suits that the people buy clothing made in Vietnam nothing terrible happened the big thing we need to export is not our military it's capitalism and capitalism through China and other countries was going to was gonna bind us in the future trading partners and the fact that people are making money and their economic interests are at pl in, 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 intact and they're, they're tied to ours. And that's what's going to help us, not bombs and not invading countries and occupying countries. <laughs> Must the United States forever and ever be the world's policeman, the world's welfare daddy, the world's, uh, the, the, you know, m must, they, must they just continue uh, to go where n none others will go and to be blamed for everything that right. goes amiss? Right. It was like an alcoholic, you know, keep drinking until you're out of money. It's the same thing until we're out of money and, and if our, our country fails, it'll be because we're no longer an economic power. We keep printing money to do these, these irrational wars and we just need to tend to our own business. Imagine if all the trillion, the trillion dollars that's been spent on these wars, imagine if it had been spent in the United States in a stimulus bill or just protecting our borders with the National Guard or New York. I mean, no country can come across that ocean and attack us. They can sucker punch us and yes, 9-11 was a sucker punch. It was awful. But I always say it's like, a, it's like being in a bar and be a little bit drunk and someone hits your friend and you're not really sure who hit your friend, but it kind of looked like that guy. So we invade Iraq and we're just out to get back. It's like a bad, uh, a bad comedy. Uh, we, we go after the wrong people and we haven't caught bin Laden. Uh, they're very wily over there. They're protecting him in a big way. Uh, we if they're gonna be crazy religious extremists, let them be on their own country. And if they pull up and get an army, we fly over and we mow them down. Make them glow in the dark. I like that a lot. <laughs> uh, Ron Hart, when we come back, a little bit on uh, economics and Mr. Bernanke. Don't go away.